Hello everyone, my name is Sushwet Kumar Pandey. Today's presentation is on the capstone project, cardiovascular risk prediction using machine learning classification algorithms. The given data set is from an ongoing cardiovascular study on some patients and the classification goal is to predict whether the patient has 10 year risk of future coronary heart disease or not. These are the details about the features present in the data set. So there are some demographic features, some behavioral features, some feature represent the medical history of the patient, while some represent the current medical details. And then there is a target variable which we have to make the predictions on. So let's have a quick look at all the features one by one. There is a column named sex to show whether the patient is a male or female. Then age column consists the age of the patient. Is smoking is a binary variable, shows whether or not the patient is a current smoker. Cigarettes per day, it shows the number of cigarettes that the person smoked on daily basis. Then these uh, medical history features. So these uh, BP meds shows whether or not the patient was on blood pressure medication. These all are binary variables. So prevalent stroke, it shows whether or not the patient had previously had a stroke. And prevalent hype shows whether the patient was hypertensive, similarly diabetes. This shows whether or not the patient had diabetes. Then total cholesterol, systolic BP, diastolic blood pressure, BMI, heart rate, and glucose. These all are continuous variables, and these are the current medical details of the patient. Finally, the target variable is 10-year risk of coronary heart disease, which is CHD. It is a binary variable. It consists 1 and 0, so 1 means yes, and 0 means no, of course. Then these are the basic details about the data set. There were no duplicate rows present in the data set, and the shape of data set was uh, this, so it contained 3,390 rows and 17 features. There were some missing values in some columns. So these are the details. These are the name of the columns and these are the count and percent of missing values present in all the features. We replaced all the null values in all the features with the median values of all the particular columns. After that, we started visualizing the distribution of all the features. So this is how the distribution of age looks like. This is for cigarettes per day. This is total cholesterol. It shows a bell-shaped curve. However, it is a little skewed towards the right. And similarly, systolic BP is also showing a normal distribution, but a little skewed towards the right. Same goes for diabetes and BMI is also skewed. Heart rate is also a little skewed. Glucose is very much skewed towards the right. Looks like there are so many outliers in this region. After that, we started checking for outliers. So these data points outside the whiskers in the box plot are representing the outliers. So cigarettes per day, total cholesterol, systolic BP, and these are the outliers in remaining columns. There are so many outliers in the glucose column, as we saw earlier in the distribution as well. So we started dealing with the outliers after that. We used the standard IQR method to treat the outliers. We replaced all the outliers by the median values. So this is the comparison. This is the distribution of glucose column before outlier treatment and this is after outlier treatment. This is how it was looking earlier. After that, uh, we see that there were these many outliers. After we treated, there were only few outliers left and the distribution has become very close to normal distribution. It seems like mean and median are all lying on the same line here at the center. Similarly, these are the comparisons of other features. So this is the distribution box plot before, and these are the distribution and box plot after outlier treatment. So this is for cigarettes per day, total cholesterol. We see that earlier it was skewed. However, it is now normally distributed, and these outliers are also removed. And same goes for systolic BP, diabetes, BMI, heart rate. These all have become normally distributed. So after checking the outliers, we did some data manipulation, like we replaced all the string values present in the columns by numeric values. For example, we replaced M with one and F with zero in the sex column, and then yes with one, no with zero in the is smoking column. And similarly, we did some imputations on the other columns as well in order to pass the, that data set to the model. After that, we started with the univariate analysis. These are all the uh, histogram of all the count of the values present in all the features. 
so this shows that most of the people in the data set are around age 40 to 50 and this uh, these red lines and blue lines are representing the mean and median of the data so red line is the mean and blue one is the median this is for the education this is sex we see that uh, zero is representing the female so female population is comparatively high and male is uh, the data for male population is less in the data set and smokers and non-smokers are almost equal in the data set and most of the people smoke less than 10 cigarettes a day this is uh, bp meds so less very less number of people have the history of blood pressure medication this is for prevalent stroke these are very most of the people do not have any history of prevalent stroke while very less number of people do have similarly for prevalent hypertension so good number of people have uh, the history of hypertension and similarly this is a uh, diabetes so these many people are diabetic most of the people are not diabetic and this total cholesterol, systolic BP, diabetes, BP, BMI, heart rate, glucose, these all are continuous variables and they are very much normally distributed. This is the target variable, 10 years CSD. So we see that uh, these many people do not have the risk of future coronary heart disease, while only few number of people have the risk of heart disease. So we'll have to deal with the class imbalance problem as well, which we will deal in the later slides. These are all the observations that we already discussed based on univariate. After that, we started with the bivariate analysis. So we just tried to find out whether there is any linear relation between all the target, uh, between all the independent uh, features and the target variable. So this is age versus 10 years CSD. Age, this uh, red line shows the line of regression between these two variables. So we see that the age is positively correlated with the target variable. So if the age of a person increases, then the risk of heart disease increase, which is intuitive as well. And then this is education versus the target variable. This is sex versus 10 years CSD. So zero was representing female. So female are less prone to heart disease. While if they are male, then there are a little high chances of heart disease. And this is, is smoking versus 10 years CSD. It is also positively correlated. And then this shows cigarettes per day. So if the number of cigarettes smoked, uh, cigarettes smoked by the patient increases, then obviously the risk of heart disease will increase. And then this is BP meds versus 10 years CSD. So if they have the history of BP medication, then the risk is more. They, if they have the history of prevalent stroke, then the risk is more. Similarly, this is prevalent hypertension. This is uh, diabetes versus 10 years CSD. So if they have diabetes, then the risk is increasing. This is total cholesterol. So cholesterol is also positively correlated. Systolic BP is also positively related. Dia BP is also positive. And then BMI is also positively correlated. If the BMI is high, then that means that the person is obese. So obviously the risk of heart disease will increase. And then this is heart rate versus CSD. This is glucose and this is the target variable itself. So after that, we did correlation analysis, which is multivariate analysis. And because we first wanted to try the logistic regression model, and we know that in the logistic regression, there is an assumption of non-multicollinearity. So we just started dealing with multicollinearity. We see that uh, there are some highly correlated independent variables. So for example, is smoking is very highly related with cigarettes per day, because these are actually the same thing. We'll have to drop one of these features. And then, Prevalent hypertension is also related with systolic BP, dia BP, and then cis BP is related with prevalent hy hypertension and this dia BP. These are the same thing. So we'll have to drop all these highly correlated features and we'll have to leave only one feature that uh, makes sense, that is important. So this is one way. Either we can drop by looking at the degree of correlations, like uh, we see that is smoking is related with the cigarettes per day. 
so degree of correlation between is smoking and the target variable is 0.21 while uh, with the cigarettes per day it is 0.2 so in this case we can drop this cigarette per day because uh, this contains less information about the variance in this the target variable so like this we can deal with the multicollinearity but there is one more way which is using the variance inflation factor so we kept the threshold of variance inflation factor to be 10 and all the variables whose vif score was greater than 10 we kept on dropping them one by one and kept on checking the vif of remaining features so finally we were left with these many features only we see that all the vif scores of all the features now is less than 10 so we are in good shape we have dealt with the uh, multicollinearity in this way after that we updated the data set by dropping all the unnecessary features so these this is the result we achieved now we see that it looks pretty good there are not uh, highly correlated independent features looks pretty good after that we started uh, proceeding forward for model building so there were some prerequisites for example we used min max scalar for scaling the features and then we defined a custom f1 scorer for class one of the target variable because by default the grid search maximizes the macro average of f1 score of all the classes however we were just interested in the f1 score of class one so for that we defined the f1 score of class one to use that scoring in the grid search while hyperparameter tuning and then there was a problem of class imbalance as well we see that this is the count of class 0 and class 1 in the target variable so we started dealing with it first of all we did oversampling using smot so which is synthetic minority oversampling technique and then we also removed the atomic links which is the data points near the decision boundary in order to get a clear decision line or uh, a good classifier so this is before handling the class imbalance and this is the value counts of all the classes in the target variable after dealing with the class imbalance and then we defined a function which can take the classifier model and all the train test splits as input and can output the classification report for train and test data and also plots the feature importance so first of all we tried with the logistic regression because it is quite simple so this is the classification report on the train set this is the confusion matrix and this is roc auc curve and these metrics are for the test set so we see that on the test set we are getting the precision 0 0.25 recall 0.66 f1 score we are getting is 0.36 and according to logistic regression the most influencing feature is age so these are just the absolute values of the beta beta coefficients uh, before applying the uh, sigmoid function so this gives us a high level idea about the influencing features so these are the results so precision 0.25 this is for class one on the test data and most important feature was uh, this age after that we also experimented with a knife based classifier most of the time this algorithm is used to compare with other algorithms that how well the model is performing so we just wanted to uh, check whether the logistic regression was performing better than the baseline model or not so this knife base is considered as baseline because it uh, runs quite quickly. So this is the classification report on the train set. This is, uh, these are on the test set. So on the test set for class one, the precision is 0.4 and the recall value is 0.26. F1 score we got was 0.32. So this was not performing that well. We tried some complex algorithms as well. So first of all, we used support vector classifier which is comparatively complex uh, than logistic regression and then these are the results which we obtained so we for class one on the test data the precision we got was 0.2 recall was 0.71 and f1 score we got was 0.31 
and this is the ROC AUC curve. This is on the train set and this is on the test set. Then we also use some ensemble of decision trees, so random forest classifier. So we did hyperparameter tuning in order to get the best set of hyperparameters. So we got these configurations. These are the best hyperparameters. So max depth eight and is on the test set for class one. We got these results. So precision 0.24, recall 0.55, and F1 score 0.34. You can see from this chart as well. Yes, heat map. And then the most important feature according to random forest classifier is the age again. And then it is followed by the systolic BP. After random forest classifier, we experimented with the XG bush classifier. And these are the results which we got. So on the train set, uh, we got decent results. While on the test set for class one, the precision we got 0.28 and recall 0.5, F1 score 0.36. And the most influencing feature, most important feature was age and prevalent hypertension. So age, we see that uh, till now, for almost all the algorithms, age is the most influencing feature. After that, we also experimented with the KNN classifier. So these are the results which we got. So we got precision 0.17, recall 0.38, F1 score 0.23 on the test set for class one. And accuracy is 62%. So after experimenting with all the algorithms, we drew some conclusions based on all the algorithms. So, so if we want to avoid any situation where the patient has a heart disease and who has the heart disease, then of course the high recall will be desired. And in that case, we can take a support vector classifier into consideration because it was giving highest recall if we compare with all the remaining algorithms. And then uh, if we want to avoid treating a patient who do not have any heart disease, then high precision is desired. So in that case, we can go with the knife based classifier for this given problem. And then if uh, precision and recall both are equally important, let's suppose that the patient who are incorrectly classified, maybe uh, they are equally important and they could be suffering from some other disease. So we don't want to misclassify them as well. So F1 score will be desired in that case. So if F1 score is important for us, then logistic regression and XGBoost model were performing quite well because these two models have the highest F1 score in all the experimented algorithms for this given data set. And then, so the third point says that since we added some synthetic data points to handle the class imbalance problem, so there was a huge difference between the train set performance and the test set performance, but that was because there was a data distribution mismatch because we only did oversampling in the train set while we left the test, uh, test set as it is. So that's the reason there was a huge difference between the performance on train and test. And these are the best performance models. So on the basis of evaluation metrics for class one on the test set. So for accuracy, if accuracy is important, then a knife-based classifier was doing quite well because it has the highest accuracy as compared to all the remaining algorithms uh, used for this particular problem. So, all right, that is it in this video. I hope you like the video and I hope you like the approach that we, first of all, we started with a simple model and then we kept on increasing the complexities. Then finally, we used some ensemble of decision trees and some boosting techniques as well. And then uh, we also did the oversampling to handle the class imbalance. And so that is it. Thank you, have a nice day.